Hello, awesome people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at this short story called The Guardian of the Book. It was written by Henry Hess uh, for you folks. It's 30 pages long. It's in this collection we've been doing a deep dive into called Tales of the Lovecraft Mythos for you folks. I thought that it was in the section that was uh, not in the Cthulhu Mythos and so forth, but it's not like evenly divided into such. Uh, and it's just after a short story that, I, that was uh, that I remembered for you folks. And so I went back and read it again last night. It actually is in the Cthulhu Mythos. So I'll save this till next October uh, when I do my Cthulhu Mythos and dedicate it uh, to that genre every year uh, for you folks. Uh, this collection was published in, in the mid 90s. I'll try to find it for you online. I knocked out last night uh, in, in actually very fast. I, it was pretty it was a pretty quick uh, knockout. Since I, I read uh, the previous two short story was 48 pages long and I divided it into 24 pages and it took me a little less then an hour, like 55 minutes for me to do each each day. And this one added it six pages, so I figured it would probably have like 12 or 15 minutes since this is an oversized collection. And then I realized after I finished it that I was like, that was actually really fast. It didn't even take me an hour for me to read this one too, so it was pretty quick. Uh, uh, quick, quick clip of this 30-page short story. Uh, and I enjoyed how fast it and re reading read it was. So let's go ahead and start my review of this short story, uh, The Guardian of the Book. So in this short story, uh, basically what's happening, this is set in a Cthulhu Mythos. It does mention books like uh, the Necronomicon and so forth. Our main character is a uh, is, a, is an antiquarian who likes to collect books uh, from various places. He he journeys uh, to a a he's looking for a book shop bookstore. Uh, he comes across a used bookstore that he's never seen before in the area that he's traveling in. So he goes in to check it out. Uh, the proprietor is at is making dinner uh, and he hears he hears people eating and so forth. So he he uses it. And a lot of people during this era would have lived where they work, right? So that wouldn't have been unusual. So he does something and doesn't come out to talk to him. So he uses that time to dig for books. It's pretty uh, disorganized and so forth. Uh, and then uh, the person who is the proprietor comes to him after he's been spending some time and he got lost in it, just looking at books and staring at books and so forth. Uh, and it's uh, he says, you're never going to find uh, what you want. Our point of view character says it's probably because it's disorganized. He says, sure, but the reason why is the book you're looking for is that the books that you're looking for aren't here. Those, the Necronomicon, uh, the things and so forth, and they start to have a conversation. He knows his name uh, and so forth. Uh, and he'll introduce a book. Uh, which is the title of this about three or four pages into this uh, called that, that we'll learn more about uh, and he'll call basically it's the truth of the Cthulhu mythos this is where this is or the the Necronomicon Cthulhu this is where all the truth of all those myths and legends comes from and it's darker than any of them it makes it makes the Necronomicon look like a cookbook so that's the book that we're going to be talking about um, and so forth the guardian of the book uh, from the title of this short story. I remember I don't keep my reviews spoiler free, so I only do reviews of the first, and when, I, when I talk about uh, synopses of about the first four or five pages, in this case a longer short story, or maybe the first chapter to a novel, uh, in order to get you in the, uh, in the mood for what's actually happening uh, and the title and such. Uh, so there you go. To get you sort of, get your mouth wet and so forth. So, so what do I think about this 30 page short story? Well, it was probably, it's probably too long, too much conversations, and so forth. Uh, it is in the Cthulhu Mythos, but it doesn't have a huge number of references, and I, and I don't mind that, and so forth. Uh, but it definitely didn't feel its, it's length well, and so forth. It wasn't. It wasn't this great read that I went when I went back and read this for a second time after picking up this collection in college, uh, again published in the mid '90s that I picked up when I was doing a deep dive into the Cthulhu Mythos and H.P. Lovecraft started in my junior year when he became a, my favorite author, uh, and then I started reviewing his stuff. Um, uh, I read it contemporaneously, devoured it. Then uh, this collection of stuff, which collects a lot of things in the Cthulhu Mythos that names uh, other things in the uh, first time that they that they appeared uh, in the Cthulhu Mythos, instead of you know maybe a different time or some things that were spawned that are were inspired by H.P. Lovecraft writing during the pulp era, but then wasn't actually in the Cthulhu Mythos that he created uh, with his with his self-contained shared works with other authors. Uh, so there you are. Uh, so that's why I, I read it the first time. That's why I read it, went back and read it a second time. But it just doesn't feel like this great short story that adds much to the genres. I don't think that the idea of revealing the secrets and, and how they revealed it of the actual 
Cthulhu Mythos and what's actually happening behind the scenes. I don't think that idea works. I don't think the way that he does it works either. So I, I don't like either of those. It feels like the short stories in the Cthulhu Mythos that have H.P. Lovecraft actually in them, right? It feels like it's a, like it's a, like it's a nod to the fans, or and the short stories that have been published are actually published in this short in the Cthulhu Mythos. I don't like that. It feels like a nod to the fans and fan service uh, rather than actual proper story development that makes sense for that story and what it's trying to tell. I just don't. I think that the idea of the secret behind the Cthulhu Mythos doesn't make sense in any Cthulhu Mythos sort of story of way. It just doesn't work uh, for me as a fan of the Mythos. And uh, the fact that it just doesn't do a good job with that information either. Right. So that's 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 my reasons for behind that sort of thing. So there you are. So, so that's my 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 take on on uh, the Guardian of the Book. Uh, that was again 30 pages long. Knocked it out last night for you folks. I'm giving this probably just a six out of ten. Again, it was fast, faster than I thought it would be going back and rereading it for a second time for this channel. But there you are, go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read it? If so, what'd you think about it? Did you agree or disagree with my 6 out of 10? Would you like to talk about in the comments below? Let's do it. If you enjoyed this, why not hit that subscribe button? Because there's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing in watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.